derive the equation for the thermal efficiency of the auto cycle assuming a cold air standard analysis. Oh boy. So this is the equation we want to derive. It's, it's a classic equation. And so how do we derive this equation? We'll go back to the basics. What is the definition of thermal efficiency? We just used it. The work net divided by the Q in. All right. Or I'm going to go ahead and put it in the context of our 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 notation. So this is 1, 2, 3 to 4. So Q in is Q 2 to 3. True? So, and the work net, I can replace by Q net, true? 2 to 3. And Q net, we already just said, was two of those components. The 1 to 2 is 0. The Q 2 to 3 is non-zero. 3 to 4 is 0. Q 4 to 1 is non-zero. So Q 2 to 3. So we find that our thermal efficiency is a ratio of 1 plus Q 4 to 1 divided by Q 2 to 3. Hey, it's starting to look like the answer that I want to show or derive, true? I got one minus something. Well, let's put the minus here and put the minus there because we know 4 to 1 is negative. So now I have a positive in the numerator. Okay. We go back to what was uh, Q 2 to 3. Is that equal to U3 minus U2? Thumbs up if you agree. Was that equal to C sub V? T3 minus T2? Thumbs up if you agree. Because it's a cold air standard analysis. Cold meaning constant specific heats at room temperature. All right, so what we do is we replace this by 1 minus, and we have C sub V, T3 minus T2. How about the numerator? It's going to be C sub V, T, um, uh, I got too many minus signs. I want a positive entity, T4 minus T1. Can we cancel the CVs? <coughs> and when we do this derivation for an analytic expression for the thermal efficiency of a diesel cycle, all of the steps up to this point will look the same. When we do the derivation of the analytic expression for the thermal efficiency of the Brayton cycle, all of the steps up to this point will look the same. But now they differ. Auto, diesel, Brayton kind of split. But all the steps up to this point look the same. Now, what do we do is, uh, actually, they, they, they have some similar trends after this even. But let's go. 1 minus, do this. Pull out T1 and pull out T2. Why'd you do that? Don't ask me why. Because when I look back at our handy equations, for, uh, let me see if that's on this page. It is on this page, right here. Did I say this equation was helpful? Did I say that this equation is used to, like you can express T2, the temperature at the end of compression, is equal to the temperature at the beginning of the compression stroke times the compression ratio raised to the K minus 1 power? Right? So in your mind, let's, I don't, whatever, grab this, edit, copy. Bring it over here. Is this the right place? Edit, paste. Bring it up here. So if that's true, then, then, then this becomes 1 minus 1 over to the k minus 1 times t4 over t1 minus 1 over t3 over t2 minus 1. See that? you follow that? I just used the red equation right here, and I got T1 divided by T2 is equal to 1 over R to the K minus 1, and I used it to replace this. And now we have what we're looking for. All I have to show is what's in this parenthesis right here is 0. I mean, not 0, 1. Sorry, 1. It's unity. Okay? Okay. So what we do is, uh, you think about it this way, is T4 over T1 equal to T4 over T3, T3 over T2, T2 over T1. Is that true? 
Is that true? The, this, this, this ratio right here in the, in the parenthesis. I'm just focusing on that ratio in the, in the parenthesis. And all I have to do is say, uh, you know, this, this term is right here. So it must mean that the product of T3 and T4 over T3 is equal to the times the product of T2 over T1 is 1. That's all I have to show. Um, and if you think about it, look at T2 is greater than T1 because you're compressing via the uh, compression ratio of R. But isn't that just like if I, I know I'm not going from 4 to 3, but if you went started at 4 and compressed isentropically with the same compression ratio, wouldn't you get to state 3? Scooting it down. So what you have is that you have T2 over T1 is the compression ratio to the K minus 1 and T3 over T4 is R to the K minus 1 or the reciprocal. And so when you multiply these together, you get unity. So now this whole thing is unity. And there's your derivation. So what you set out to show, 1 minus 1 over the compression ratio to the K minus 1. All right. So what you can do with this analytic expression <coughs> is you can plot something like the compression ratio uh, for auto cycle, and you can plot the thermal efficiency, and you see that for low compression ratios, it, uh, it's lower, and then it goes up. And so there's a benefit to having a high compression ratio gasoline engine. <laughs>